go. Everyone, get up, out of your seats, stand up, let's go, let's get it shaken up a little bit. Up you get, up you get. Come on, guys. Oh, these guys up the front going, God. Oh, oh my God, it's so difficult to get up. We're so old. Come on, hands up, hands up, shake it out, shake it out, that's it. Okay, we're gonna do a type of Mexican wave, but because it's not a massive room, let's try a new type of wave. We're gonna call this an Australian wave. Guys in the middle, everyone look at them until they stand up. Oh, there we are, and they're up now too. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna try a new type of Mexican wave. We're gonna start at the front. We're gonna go across and then back one row, go across, it's gonna be like snake. Ready? And when it gets to you, we're staking back and forth all the way up to the top of the room. Ready, three, two, one, go! Yeah! Everyone's gonna cheer on the way, yeah! Yeah! Keep it up, yes! Going across, I didn't even have to tell you guys, reach so high that you pull a muscle. Ready, keep going. <laughs> okay, pick up the pace, let's go, faster. Yeah! Across. Everyone cheer as loud as you can when it's coming to you. Woo! Keep going, keep going. I want to see you get all the way to the back. Yes, keep going. Yeah. Woo, that's right. <laughs> keep going, excellent. All the way to the back. Yeah. Everyone start cheering, bring it up, bring it up. Woo. And we've hit the back. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Everyone take your seats. I am Jordan. I'm going to be taking you through what I get to do throughout my life. It's a nuts life. I get to go out there and see so many different things, advancements in science and technology, how people come together and collaborate, how we work together. And this is a very important thing for our advancements as we move into the future. The fact that I didn't have to really describe too quick, you know, I didn't have to take a long time to describe to you what you were going to do then. And you're all able to come together very quickly and coordinate yourselves. One of the amazing things about being human now, I get to travel the world finding out what's happening in science and technology, the major advancements happening out there. I bring a lot of the ideas, technologies, philosophies back to Australia so that I can build my own projects. Now, this is uh, where I was exactly a month ago. This is the widest angle telescope in the world. It uh, doesn't look like a normal telescope, does it? It's, a, it's kind of a set of mirrors. It's a whole bunch of mirrors. All of those mirrors can move and flex. What they do is they find spectral, frequent, uh, spectral data of stars. And uh, it's a massive mirror. Check this out. Massive mirror that beams the light all the way up to another mirror and back into an optical sensor. With this particular uh, telescope, as well as international collaborations between China, the States, and even uh, uh, Spain, what they did was they brought all these researchers together to start looking out into space, looking out into the stars. And what they found is that the Milky Way galaxy, in the last five years, they've discovered the Milky Way galaxy is about twice the size they previously thought. They used to think it was about 50,000 light years from the center to the furthest star. They've now found stars as far as 100,000 light years from the center, which is incredible. In 2014, they also discovered something called a hypervelocity star. Stars that travel so fast, they can escape the gravitational pull of an entire galaxy and head off into space. And they go, "Wee, freedom, and they head off into space. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Stuff. Now, what I like to do is to see what is happening out there, and I've got all these documentaries um, with Discovery Channel and ABC, even National Geographic, finding out what is happening out there. But I've got to bring it back to my story. What I'm going to share with you today is a little bit about my story, just a few things that I get to work on and a few of the adventures I've been on. But we've always got to start with inspiration. We've got to start with inspiration. What inspires you? Well, I can't tell you what that is, and neither can anyone here. You've got to figure it out for yourself. Um, my inspirations come from my parents. I've got to start there. Um, I kind of look as young as I do probably because of the silly hair and the half Asian. Um, I've, my dad is Vietnamese. He's uh, an amazing professor, an amazing mind. He went through electronics, power engineering, robotics and artificial intelligence into biomedical technology. My mum is a very social, compassionate person. She's Aussie Scottish uh, and she's an artist. So I was on mum's side most of my life. I was on mum's side, sort of always finding those creative outlets. I loved art going through school, um, but I wasn't a star student on any other side apart from uh, loving art. So this is where I grew up. I grew up in Maryland uh, in 
Western Sydney. It was a land of adventure. Yes, we've got some Marylands people. I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a great land of adventure. Awesome. Uh, the kid across the, the road from me, his legal name was Frog. Uh, Frog loved blades. Frog sat out the front of his house and sharpened these giant knives. Um, so I stayed clear of Frog um, and made friends with his younger brother. I thought it was critical to my survival. Um, but uh, what happened was it was sort of a land of adventure. It was a lot of fun. I was a little shit. Um, I used to love setting things on fire. It wasn't great. Um, and then three and a half years after me, my parents planned on having one more child, just one, but they accidentally got triplets. Uh, <laughs> They are great at adapting to change. Uh, so I got brothers and a sister. Two brothers and a sister uh, had kids who helped me go and set things on fire. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't great. Um, but we ended up moving out of the, the place when I was seven. I calmed right down. Uh, my brothers went on to become medical doctors. My sister, a speech pathologist. I went into the areas that I found interesting, which was kind of a bit of everything. Um, but I'll take you through that now. Where I was going through school, I never really understood what, why I was doing what I was doing. And you heard in the last talk, you know, you've got to focus on things like mathematics if you find anything interesting in the physics space, in, in uh, computer space, in data science, any of those sort of areas, absolutely, mathematics is, uh, is, is crucial. But I never understood why I was learning what I was learning going through school. I got into year 12 and I decided that I wanted to follow in my dad's footsteps. I finally started to get to that point where I went, you know what, I really love what my dad's doing in biomedical, in robotics, in artificial intelligence, all those areas that I thought, that is just way above me. Uh, I, can't, I can't work on any of those sort of things. Um, but I decided to sort of follow in his footsteps, try and take on uh, electrical engineering. Now, at the time when I was trying to get into electrical engineering, it was uh, a mark of 72. Now it's up around 90. It's gotten a lot more, uh, a lot higher in the mark since then, but 72, and I didn't think I was going to get that. I went into year 12 given an estimate of 66. Uh, we were on the UAI system, but I was given an estimate of 66. So what did I do? I aimed at 90, and I put that number everywhere to remind myself of this goal every day, and I kept working towards it. Uh, my mum said that she'd get me a car if I got 90, so that was cool. Make bets with your parents. Um, and uh, then she told my friends it was a safe bet right in front of me. Uh, that wasn't very nice. Uh, but guess what? No, she was right. Um, <laughs> I got 89.75. Can you believe how bloody close that was? No car, but I got into my course, so that's all right. I was never going to hold on to it anyway. Look, here is what I started to find. Inspiration and interest. You've got the things that you're interested in, especially if you're learning about anything in school, any of the things that, topics that you're learning about that you find interesting, but if you combine that with inspiration, anything is possible. It can lead to something called passion. Now, often you'll get told, go with what you're passionate about, but if you don't know what your passion is, then how do you even start? So find the things that you're inspired by, and the people, the things out there, the challenges of the world, like what Tim was talking about, cleaning up the oceans is an amazing thing. Find the things that you're inspired by, and the things that you're interested in. Bring those together, and then anything becomes possible. Now, I went into electrical engineering, uh, started working on robotics and AI. I built robots that could take people on tours of the university. I thought that was really cool, but I got to the end of my second year. I was struggling again, um, even though I'd built some pretty cool robots and worked with some amazing people. But I talked to my dad about it and said, I'm done here. I'm going to drop out. Um, I'm going to go do something else. And I think I might go into psychology or something where I get to work with people because I find people fascinating. Um, and I'm not sure about you know, the, the robotic side. It's just it's fun, but I'm building robots. I don't want to build tour guide robots my whole life. Um, he told me to take on one more semester. He said, in that semester, he'll mentor me. Um, and uh, it turned out that I took on that next semester. I went to a friend's birthday party. In that next semester, we had a backyard pool at this party. We had a diving board. We were pretty silly. Uh, I ended up running and jumping off this diving board. It came loose and moved back. I went into the water, hands out, um, all the way up to the, to the uh, well, up, it was above me, but I was going down. Um, I uh, found myself at the bottom of the pool. My head hit the bottom of the pool before my hands did, and I felt this Massive crunch across the back of my neck. Um, I got rushed off to hospital. I got very, very lucky. No fractures, no breakages, but I tore some of the muscles in my neck. And what it led me to start finding out about was learning about disability, because I knew nothing about it. I thought, what would have happened if this was permanent? So it changed my life. All the things that I took for granted, I found myself stuck in my bed for about a day and a half, not able to roll over, not even able to get up onto my side made me think very differently. So I started looking up things like disability. I knew nothing about it. Now, I found out one in five Australians have some form of a disability, and 1.4 million Australians, this is about one in 16, so about one in 16 people have severe or profound disability in Australia. This is about one person every row here. 
Now, that made me think very, very differently about what sort of technologies might be out there. So I started thinking, you know, is there anything I could do? Could I learn about people's stories? So I went out and started meeting people. Now, I met people with very high-level physical disabilities and just made these amazing friends. One of those stories is that of Jess Irwin. When I met Jess, uh, it was around about 10 years ago now, but when I met Jess, I wasn't entirely sure if she could understand me or not. Always assume if you meet a person with high-level disability, just assume the person can understand you just fine. Now, I met uh, Jess. She uh, opened up an iPad. She slowly tapped out the words, this is what I do. She battles spasticity in her hand, but she can hit exactly where she wants to hit. Now, uh, she was born with high-level cerebral palsy. It affects all of her movements, her ability to speak, but she is brilliant. She passed me a business card, and she typed, this is what I do. She's a professional photographer, graphics designer, website designer, running her own business. And I just didn't even know how to handle that. Now, we went on to many other adventures, and I'm going to come back to that later. But people like Jess, people who could think bigger than I could, who could set their minds to it and achieve anything that they wanted, that's what changed me. And I started going, well, I thought big back in, in high school when I set those marks of 90. Could I do it again? And, uh, and I started a project to build a wheelchair that could be controlled by the power of the mind. I thought it was impossible, but the biggest thing that happens is when you have a big idea, a great dream, you start. Just start on it and learn what you need to along the way. A um, couple of years after starting this, I finally figured out how to make it happen. Now, I found out that we are an electrical system. This was so cool, and this is where mathematics started making sense to me. Uh, we have the electrical signals of the heart. We all recognize this pattern, OK? That's ECG. We all recognize that, right? Then we've all got EMG, the electrical signals of the muscles. Whenever we move, the magic of movement, our brain sends electrical signals to every strand of muscle fiber within a muscle, and that's what makes it contract. We've got EOG, electrooculography, the electrical signals of the eyes, and EEG, the electrical signals of the brain, and that's what I'm using here. So my friend Albert here, uh, he broke his neck in a motorbike accident four years before this. This is in 2011. Uh, the headband he's wearing has electrodes inside it, picking up the little electrical signals of the brain. It's sending it through artificial intelligence in the form of what's called machine learning. It's very good at finding patterns and differences in data, like the data of his brain waves. Uh, so it's not reading his mind, but it's recognizing when it's seeing thoughts that he's already shown it. So he has associated different thoughts with different movements. The wheelchair takes over and it makes the travel safe. You can't crash it. It will find its way around by observing where the people are and the objects and all of that, and it will make the travel safe along the way. Now I thought, how can I take this further? I wanted to try and figure out how we could take this further, so I started a social business uh, in 2014 called PsyKinetic. Psyche and Kinetic, putting the mind into action. And we make this really exciting. We build a lot of different technologies. We look at what's already out there and how can we make it more inclusive of everyone. Um, one of those technologies is looking at how computers, laptops, tablet PCs could be uh, brought in. An eye tracker can be connected to it. You can buy an eye tracker from the States. Um, we can connect it to a computer, and it tracks where your eyes are looking at on the screen. So our young superhuman mate Riley here from one of my documentaries is testing this out. He's flying this spaceship in an infinity runner just using his eyes. So you look on the screen, there's a blue bar, you look between the edges, and it moves the little spaceship left and right. You've got to try and not, not to uh, crash. This video just keeps going because he's so damn good at it. Um, but then I started looking at other technologies as well. What else is out there? What else could we harness? Alternate realities. We've got extended reality, which encapsulates all of these areas. We've got virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality. Who's tried virtual reality? Hands up, let's have a look. Who's tried virtual reality? Most of the people here. Let's go the other way, and let's be honest. Who hasn't, who hasn't tried virtual reality? Yeah, yeah, no. Nah. Some guys aren't entirely sure. What's your name in the middle there with the, uh, with the tie, not with the jacket on? Yes, the one looking to the mate next to him and now trying to cover himself. Is... Yes, what's your name? Sorry? I can't even hear you. Say again. Leon, Leon. Have you, uh, have you tried virtual reality before, Leon? Once, yes. How about a round of applause for Leon? He's going to come to the stage. Come on, Leon. Come on. You're going to be a champion. You're going to love this. Come to the stage. Let's go. Absolute champion. <laughs> All right. Leon, have you ever played table tennis? Yeah, is it, is it Leon? Did I get that right? Excellent. You played table tennis? Get this. You're going to play table tennis. This is going to be awesome. Come over here, Leon. You're a champion. Nice to meet you. Everyone, a bit of a round of applause for Leon. He's going to give this a go. OK, stand right here and face that direction. Uh, let's get the hat on backwards. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Or oh, throw it down. Let's do that. OK, put your eyes straight into this. OK, is it on tight enough? Yeah. yeah. OK, hand, can you see that? And the other hand, can you see that? Now, you bring the ball to you by doing this. Drop it onto the table and hit it. 
cool, isn't it? What can you see? You've got a robot on the other side. You've got a table tennis in front of you. Have a few swings. Take him out. You can do this. Now, this is the amazing thing about virtual reality. It can make any imagination come to life. I've seen kids as young as year four building their own virtual reality experiences. Keep going, Leon. You've got this. Take him out for us. Make us proud. Everyone, right now, the round of applause. Come on. He's going he's to take out the robot. Now, these two girls, years five and six, these two girls, I met them five years ago, and they decided they were going to build an experience to teach others how the heart works, because they know how the heart works, but they were saying other people in their class don't. So they built this experience so that you could find yourself shrunk down inside the heart, watching the blood cells fly past, and it was an incredible experience so you could learn about how the heart works by being inside it. And this is one of the amazing things. You've all tried, many of you have tried virtual reality. You know how immersive it can be. We've got Leon here smashing our robot friend. How you going, Leon? You taking him out? No. No? Oh, that's all right. You did really well. Okay, let's take the headset off. Round of applause for Leon. Thanks for demonstrating, buddy. Cheers, you're a champion. Now, I'll bring that round in the break if anyone else wants to give it a try. Here is where it's starting to go. Now, we've got not only virtual reality, but we've got mixed reality and augmented reality. Now, we've all, all on the augmented reality side, tried Pokemon Go, right? We all, all remember Pokemon Go. This is in between. This is one of the new headsets going to be coming out next year uh, by Microsoft. There's many out there in the mixed reality space, but this is where you can not only create holograms, but you can interact with them. Anyone like Wizard's, Potter, uh, Wizard's Chess from Harry Potter? Yeah, yeah, we all remember that? Excellent. We decided to create Wizard Chess. Now, it was actually originally inspired by Star Wars, and I used to have a game called Battle Chess, which was a similar thing where the pieces got up and came to life. Now, we've made this not only controlled by, t by pointing, but by voice and also eyes for our mates with, uh, who, who need the more inclusive level of technology. I tell the pawn with my eyes to take out the knight there, and he moves over and slashes him. Uh, and this is the thing, you bring the holograms into the real world and then you can interact with it. And this is where some of our technology is going. It's only limited by our own imagination. So let's start thinking about the challenges out there that we want to solve. What are the things that we're wanting to move into? Uh, what are the things that you are inspired by? And what are the things that you're interested in? Bring those two together and you'll find that anything will become possible. Now, I've got documentaries at this link. If you go to my, uh, my website, you'll see my documentaries, Becoming Superhuman, Meet the Avatars, where we go into robotics, artificial intelligence, biomedical, we go into virtual reality, but it's never about the technology. It's always about the human purpose behind it. What are we trying to solve? What are we trying to design for? Now, it's all about mindset. This all comes down to mindset. You affect the lives of the people around you every single day, so recognize that. You're going to do something very quickly for me. You're going to look to the person on your left and say hi, look to the person on the right and say hi, but you're going to look directly into their eyes when you do it. Ready? Go. Hi. 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 On to the other side. Great. Excellent. Bring it back to the room. Bring it back to the room. Okay, bring it back to the room. Don't tell your life story. You've got to break after this. Okay. Tell it then, right? Now, when we look into each other's eyes, something special happens. This is something where neuroscience is starting to advance. I've got friends like Dr. Fiona Coe looking into this. It's where our brains instantly produce new neurons specifically for that person when you look directly into each other's eyes. It's why you can walk past many people on the street, and you won't notice many people until someone looks you directly in the eyes, or especially if they smile. If they smile, you might remember that for the rest of the day or the week, or maybe even the rest of your life. Right? We physiologically change each other in each other's presence. So remember to have that human interaction. It's a very important thing, figure out those social environmental issues that you want to solve and start collaborating, working together towards it. I'm going to leave you with a poem and then a final story from Jess Irwin. It's a poem that I got to do for Google's Impact Challenge. It's a social impact challenge and it was written by this amazing person within uh, the group uh, who was encapsulating a lot of my messages. It's brave to dream, but it is so much braver to act. We all have the strength to make tomorrow change tact. If we just come together, say, I've got your back, and mean it. I mean, really mean it. I mean, have you seen it? We're like tectonic plates. If we all shift restlessly, then soon enough the rest will see us break new ground. We'll wake the crowds, we'll make them proud. You'll see. Just look around you. From coast to coast and plains between, we'll heal the wounds of pains unseen and warm the cold with sweeter dreams and welcome brighter mornings. We'll coax imaginations forth and nurture minds and foster worth so that our nation's children rise to answer each their calling. With stories told in mother tongue of stringy barks and ochre sons, we keep our languages alive, our history still recording. You've always.
since the dawn of time. Been made of something, made to climb. So do it now and make it count. Stand up, stand out, move forward, don't swerve. Back to forward, think as forging futures we deserve. Be the kind of person who draws up each rising sun. Let's stop dreaming of a better world and make one. Thanks so much. And I'm going to leave you with one final story. One final story. You can do anything if you set your mind to it and take action on it. What my friend Jess, who inspired me, wanted to do was she wanted to learn to play music. She wanted to become a rock star. And, uh, and so we went on these adventures with her. We said, someday it's going to happen. Now, her idol is this amazing musician called Steve Balby from a band in the 80s. You won't remember. I remember. They were called Noiseworks, if you ever want to look them up. We loved them. Now, we went and saw Steve Balby in concert this one time. And, uh, and I was talking to Jess going, you want to be up there, don't you? You want to be playing music. Now, she let me know that it was her dream and that she wasn't able to play any, any musical instrument in the world because she had tried to, but she wasn't able to. So I said, one day we'll make this happen. And we sat down, built the tool together with my team at Psychonetic. My team came together. Steve got into it eventually, but we talked to Jess first. And we said, let's start with classical music. I've got some friends at the Opera House who are going to be playing in six weeks' time. Do you reckon if we built the tool and you practiced within that time, you'd be ready to get on stage in front of a bunch of people at the Opera House in just six weeks to play music with your eyes? And she was like, let's do it. So this is what happened. We had a meeting with Jess and it was an instant bond. They started selling tickets to it and then the concert sold out before we even started creating the device. We had about a two week time frame to develop it and then that would give her about four weeks to practice. I had not used eye control technology before this and I knew absolutely nothing about classical music. There was quite a lot of tension in the lead-up. We, we really didn't know what was going to happen. Um, everyone was a bit nervous. She didn't believe that she could be a musician at the beginning. And she just absolutely blossomed. It was a great performance and um, we had a standing ovation afterwards. I loved that because the guy who said that she didn't believe that she could be a musician became her teacher. James was fantastic within the Australia Piano Quartet. And he was, uh, one day while, she, while I was practicing, he was playing his violin and he stopped and he hit her with the, the bow. And then he goes, you're not concentrating, hold your head straight, hold your head straight. And he got back to it. She sort of looks at me and then she types out the words, should we tell him about my involuntary spasms? And I went, no. No, you're going to learn fast. So she learned so quick. She got up there. She played this amazing concert in front of all these people. And then her dream came true the next year because we took the video to Steve Balby. She got to play alongside her idol in front of 3,500 people, playing music live at the uh, Telstra Vantage massive event. Um, and then they gave us access to this space because I talked to Steve and thanked him for it. And he goes, oh, we're not, we're not done here. No, I think we're going to release a single together. And I said, of course you are. Great, excellent. So we got on board with that. We brought this amazing collaboration between Steve Balby and Psychonetic to set up a, uh, a single in 2018. We released their first single called Winners. And then this year, only towards the beginning of this year, Telstra CIC gave us access to this exact space. And I'm going to leave you with this, uh, with this single. They gave us access to this space. We brought Steve Balby, Jess Irwin, um, the Vixen Strings, the girls on strings here, and then we, uh, we also brought Psychonetic in to make this in, you know, amazing collaboration happen. And this is called Modern Love Psychonetic Mix, and this is what I'm going to leave you with today as I walk out. But at the same time, come and see me in the breaks, and we're going to try out some virtual reality and have a bit more fun. You can do anything you set your mind to. Just remember that. Thank you.
Like modern love 